all things healing podcast and video this morning it's friday so you already know fridays are for book club so the book that i am going to be talking about is necessary endings by dr henry cloud this book right here is the truth <laughs> so i'm going to share some of my takeaways from um the first couple of chapters i'm gonna get as far as i can in these 10 minutes that i want to be with you so let's get into it so necessary endings let me tell you about the book what the book is about so necessary endings um i don't want to start it okay necessary endings are about um bit the employees business and relationships that are all that all of us are have to give up in order to move forward the, the employees business and relationships that all of us that all of us have to give up in order to move forward all right necessary endings by dr henry cloud so let's get into it chapter one the good cannot begin until the bad end so here are my takeaways i wrote down the questions in the beginning because they were good questions so thought they would be helpful what is that what is this heaviness about why is it draining me Give up on what's not working in order to embrace the new, in order for anything to change. When ne- when needed endings are done well, people succeed. When they're done poorly or not at all, people don't. Why endings? Well, endings are a part of life. In order to go to the next level, some things have to end. You must end childhood in order to become an adult, right? Endings are important, and when it comes to per- to our personal lives, there are relationships that should go away, a breakup or an ending of relationship, an ending in some friendships or activities or, or unplugging some, some commitments. It's necessary to stop such prune. It's necessary to stop such pruning. There are some behaviors that need to end. There is a sign for, for things to begin. There, there, excuse me. There is a season for things to begin and things to end, Right. Endings are not only a part of life, they are a part of they are a requirement for living a thriving professional and for, for, for excuse me for living and thriving professionally and personally. Without the ability to do endings well, we flounder and get stuck, failing to meet our goals and dreams, or worse, we remain in, in a painful and sometimes destructive situations. Why do we avoid endings? Endings are necessary, we sometimes don't do it well. When we fail to end things well, we are destined to repeat the mistakes that keep us from moving on. Endings bring hope. Pruning. So in chapter two, pruning. Growth depends on getting rid of unwanted, of the unwanted. Okay, so pruning is a process of proactive endings. So think about the rose bush, the process of pruning. Healthy buds or branches that are not that these are things that you that whenever you started doing the pruning, that these are things that you got to take off, right? You got to get rid of healthy buds or branches that are not the best ones. You got to get rid of the sick branches that, that are not going to get well, right? You got to get rid of the dead branches that are that are taking up space for the healthy ones to thrive. I can't bring all the I can't bring all the buds to full bloom. Some branches are sick and diseased and will never grow. To give the healthy ones a chance, a chance to grow, the dead branches have to go away. Necessary endings. Like a rose bush, your business and your life all, and your life need all three to grow. In business and in life, executing the three types of necessary endings we describe is what characterizes people who get results. Okay. Number one, if in if in inactive or siphoning off resources. That can go to something that is not, that is more promising. It's pruned, right? You got to prune it. If an endeavor or if, if an endeavor is sick and it's not going to get well, it needs to be pruned. If it is clear that something is already dead and is pruned, it has to go. The threefold formula for doing well in life. Gut check. What is the analytical response to pruning? Do you affirm the questions, the three questions? What are, What is your emotional response to the idea of pruning? Does it turn your stomach or make you feel mean or, or, or all of the above? Pruning is necessary for anything that is alive. Pruning is, ne- is necessary for anything that is alive. There's a difference between hurt and harm. We all hurt from facing hard truth. 
Harm is when harm is when you damage someone. Facing reality isn't damaging. It may cause some hurt, but it's not damaging. Help them face the truth so they can get better. It's sad that some people can't face the truth when it comes to discomfort. Reality sometimes makes us face things without faith. Excuse me. Reality makes us sometimes face things that may hurt. We, we have to have a good definition what we want the goal to look like. It's our if we own the vision, we must prune it. If we own the vision, we must prune it. Name the rose. Define the standard you're, you're pruning towards. What are you pruning towards? Any business that is struggling will be sold. If you're not firing someone at some point, something is wrong. Pruning is not easy. Not every activity or a person is a rose. They may be a tulip. Not every activity or a person is a rose. They may be a tulip. Step one, who are you? Step two, who do you want to be, to be, to build? Define what you're shooting for and prune against that standard. In your business and in life, don't just cut back. Think, think you have pruned. You're not just cutting back, you're pruning, right? What ways are we spending time in their meetings? Okay, so just think about, these are some questions to think about. What ways are we spending time in their meetings that are good and helpful, but not, but not used for? our time together so certain things you're doing in a meeting you may not need to do this in a meeting if this if this thing is taking up so much time we may need to do this in another meeting not in this meeting right what do we have here that's sick and not getting well that's number two number three what is what is dead and just taking up space right those are the three questions when you think about the micro pruning chapter three believe believe in life cycles because they are real endings are easier to accept when you believe something normal is happening Winter, spring, summer, fall are normal changes that happen. Letting go is getting rid of is getting ready for the new. Many relationships fail because people don't shift so intent in the relationships. Do I accept that endings are natural? Am I like a doctor diagnosing always, asking what season am I in? Do I resist the ending required for changing season? If I believe in life cycles and seasons, will would I will stop resisting? Am I hanging onto a product or an activity or strategy or relationship who is season whose season has passed? What task do I need to, to change in order in order in excuse to enter the new season? What excuse me, say that again. What task do I need to change to enter the new season? Am I sowing when I should be tending? Am I tending when I should be harvesting? Am I trying to harvest in a field where winter is clearly setting in? Is it winter? Am I ignoring the retooling and planning timely now? Except that life produces too much life. Life produces more relationships than we can nurture. Activities that we can keep up with at any given time. Clients that you can service. Mentors who once fit but those time, but whose times has passed. Partners whose time has passed. Product lines. Um, and, I, and, and product lines. I can focus on strategies. If you can focus on strategies, you can execute. You're going to have to be you're going to have to be in the letting go phase all of life, right? There are there are reasons that the term spring cleaning came into existence and and morphed to mean more than just spring cleaning, right? The truth is high functioning people have many relationships and many activities. We seem to have the capacity to manage 140 to 150 relationships, not all to the same degree. High functioning people are good at having relationships and are, and are not ha- and not having them well. They prune them. Let me say that again. High functioning people are good at having relationships and not having them as well as well. They they prune they have pruned them. Your life and business will produce more buds than you can nurture. You will end some things more readily and easily. It won't register so traumatic. Nor will it. Re- nor will you. Nor will you resist. That something is wrong, except, except, except it, excuse me, except incurable sicknesses and evil exist, except that incurable sickness and evil exists. Your business and life will change when you are, when you really get it. Some people would not change and some have a vested in, have vested an interest in being destructive. Okay. That is all I have. The best performers now, the best performers know how to fail. That is all I wanted to cover. Those first three three chapters, and I know it was a lot. The good cannot begin until the bad ends. Necessary endings are so important in life, in relationship, in business.
So I hope this was helpful. Fridays are for book club. Can't wait to give them our book club call today to see everybody take away. But have an amazing day on purpose, y'all. Stay in peace.